Coming up on Mountain News this morning, an Eastern Kentucky nonprofit continues to focus on helping people rebuild their homes after the flood. And as we continue to learn more about the deadly shooting at a Michigan University, a school resource officer here in Hazard explains how schools are working to keep our students safe. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday. I'm Dakota May Gris. Hope you all had a good Valentine's Day. Uh, we start this morning with the first alert weather day. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at that forecast. And Brandon, really nothing going on right now. Right. There was some sprinkles on my car this morning. Well, a little bit more than some sprinkles, right. but yeah, and the roads were wet, but really mm -hmm. nothing going on. We had uh, some pretty good rain overnight. Mm -hmm. I had a close encounter with a deer on my way to Ooh. work, so I managed to miss that. Thank I had goodness. a deer one time in my station car. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, this would have been my personal car. and I, Nope. <laughs> it's the worst thing ever to hit a deer. Yeah. It's so jarring. And then they, I feel bad for them. They come right out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so today we're doing the first alert weather day to get you ready for tonight and tomorrow. So we're trying to give you some advance notice, even though it's pretty calm this morning. Let's take a look at live pinpoint. Doppler radar. The rain has moved out going through parts of southwest Virginia into parts of East Tennessee and now eventually over into further into Virginia and into Tennessee. Kingsport down in East Tennessee getting a pretty little shower right now, but it's moved through here this morning. Don't expect to see much more here around us in the next little bit. So we're going to continue to watch that. Temperatures very mild, very mild this morning. Close to 60 in some locations. Irvin at 59 along with Manchester, Somerset, Monticello, Williamsburg. 40s over in southwest Virginia from 45 and wise to 47 in Clintwood and then a lot of 50s out there. That's the big story this morning. That it's very mild winds starting to pick up. They're coming out of the southwest, so that's going to push our temperatures way up today. We see consistent wind speeds 16 in Hazard, 12 in Pikeville, 15 in wise, 20 in Williamsburg, 13 in Moorhead, Charleston, West Virginia, also 13 in Monticello, too, and 12 right now in Somerset. So again, fluctuating some gust out there, more than 20 miles per hour. Look back toward Lexington, 33 miles per hour gust up at Bluegrass Airport. Your outdoor forecast is going to feature a mix of clouds and sunshine, more of one than the others today in breezy conditions, but we stay dry until tonight. Temperatures top out in the low 70s today and tomorrow could be an interesting setup. Dakota. All right, thank you, Brandon. One Floyd County nonprofit continues to help those who have been impacted by July's flood. Hand in Hand Ministries normally helps those in need of home renovation or repairs due to health and safety issues. But since the flood, the nonprofit has been focusing on the recovery of damaged homes. The ministry's director says the first couple of months after the floods, the nonprofit could not help as it needed and relied on disaster relief services and response groups, but swiftly got to work and had two homeowners back into their homes by December. And that's what that's kind of what happened with the, the two houses that we worked on in Wayland. You know, they went in and they mucked it all out and we we appreciate that so much. But then our groups are ready to go in and just rebuild everything for the families. Spradlin says volunteer groups will be visiting the region starting next week and will continue their work repairing homes until Thanksgiving. In light of the Michigan State shooting that happened Monday night, and with school shootings being a common issue across the country, our Olivia Calfe caught up with one local school resource officer to learn more about its safety procedures and protocols to keep that from happening right here in our region. Here's what he had to say about the situation. We make sure all the doors are locked at all times. Uh, all the classroom doors, if a child is in a classroom, uh, other than one-on-one, -on -one, if there's two or three students in there with a the teacher, that door has to be kept locked. He says he's confident about the safety of students and says they are prepared if a situation were to happen. Well, just hours after the shooting in Michigan, a bill that would prevent police in Kentucky from enforcing any federal firearm bans made its way through committee. House Bill 153 is essentially a second try for lawmakers. Last year, this bill passed through the House, but never made it out of the Senate. The Senate committee, rather, last year, the focus was on making Kentucky a Second Amendment sanctuary state, and the bill's sponsor says that isn't changing. What this does is it declares Kentucky a, sanctuary, a Second Amendment sanctuary state. It, it ensures that our local tax dollars won't be going to enforce uh, Second Amendment issues that the federal government deems to be inappropriate. Representative Josh Bray from Mount Vernon sponsored the bill and spoke at the House Standing Committee on Veterans, Military Affairs, and Public Protection yesterday. 
The committee passed that bill through with all but one yes vote. Governor Andy Bashir's administration is asking state lawmakers for $45 million in law changes to fix the state's Department of Juvenile Justice. Leaders of the department testified in Frankfurt before lawmakers yesterday. The Lexington Herald later reports the $45 million would go toward pay raises for the workers at juvenile detention centers, as well as efforts to recruit more staff. Department leaders say they also want to increase security at facilities. The scrutiny on the Department of Juvenile Justice comes after recent riots and assaults at several facilities. A firefighter was injured while battling a house fire in Moorhead Tuesday night. A neighbor spotted the fire at a home on Circle Drive in the Lakeview Heights subdivision. The firefighter, the farmer's volunteer fire department posted these pictures. You can see the plumes of smoke pouring out of the roof. The fire ended up destroying the home and we're told the firefighter who was injured on scene was taken to UK hospital. The injuries apparently are not life threatening. A man accused of killing his girlfriend in Whitley County and then escaping from jail has now pleaded guilty to all charges against him. Nicholas Rucker pleaded guilty to, de, to murder, domestic violence, tampering with physical evidence, and illegally possessing a gun in connection to the 2019 murder of Vicki Connor. He also pleaded guilty to attempting to escape from jail and three adult kidnapping charges in connection to an escape last year. Prosecutors are recommending a 65-year prison sentence for all of those charges. He is set to be sentenced on March 20th. One ma man is facing several charges after police caught him in the act of breaking into the garage of a Laurel County home. 25-year-old Logan Martin of London is charged with burglary, public intoxication, resisting arrest, and menacing. Deputies say they were called to a home on John R. Jones Road Saturday morning for a break-in complaint. When deputies got there, they saw a Martin walking away from the scene. After a brief scuffle, Martin was eventually arrested. Well, thank you so much for getting your Wednesday morning started with the Sierra Mountain News this morning. Coming up, the Federal Aviation Administration begins reviewing itself after several incidents involving air travel in the U.S. makes headlines. And while it is breezy outside today, the big action will arrive in our region late tonight and during the daytime hours tomorrow. I'll have the latest forecast in about three minutes.